This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Diggity dink. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another week of the Nightwing News. I am Phil. Joining me as always, it is. Hello, I'm Kristen. And we've got a lot for you tonight, kids. We got the brand new issue. Finally, a month is way too long. Nightwing number 80. And we got what? Batman 35. Uh we got Batman Adventures number 12, and what's the other one we got here? Uh, World's Finest 30. Yes! So, at least for me, it's the best of both worlds, uh, floppies and digital. Quality. And, oh my god, this is my favorite uh, issue out of Tom Taylor's run so far. It was pretty funny. I mean, I'm, again, I mean, the, well, the story's great, the art's great. We get Tim this time? Come on. The only thing I can say is they still haven't officially revealed the puppy's name. I know. He's not saying the puppy's name. I, just I want, need to know. I just wonder how far ahead they print these, you know. That yeah, was this already at the printer when they are running the poll or whatever? Yeah, it could have been. You're right, but yeah, you're right. This was pretty good. You mean, you mean bite wing? Yes, right. Yes, <laughs> that's her alter ego. Oh, she needs to wear a mask. All right, you know what? I think I'm gonna have to like tweet or something at Tom Taylor and just like do like a top five reasons why he should talk to us. I, you know. Okay, you do you, Phil. Let me know what happens. <laughs> try to do something, man. We gotta talk to this guy. A busy guy, yes. Although here's what I want to say. When okay, so the police are the dogs barking. The police are at the door, and he answers it and says, "Hey, sorry, I was asleep." And the police say, "It's five in the afternoon. Did you have a late one, Mister Grayson?" Why doesn't he say something like, have you ever heard of a nap or something like that? Or like, I work nights or something, you know, so. No, don't say I work nights. It's too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> too obvious. You can say something like, have you ever heard of a nap? <laughs> well, I think they were like this, like, you know, oh, late night killing someone. Well, right. No, I know that. I know they were. But I always feel like, why don't more people say that when people give them crap about like, Oh, are you sleep late night? Why don't you be like, no, nah, I was taking a nap. <laughs> I know days I even work. If you were. Even if you weren't, it's an excellent excuse. I know. I take afternoon naps in the minute during the week when I work in the morning. I know. Yeah, it's amazing. But yes, yeah, I, dig I digress. That's just yeah. that's not just for Dave. That's for everyone in the world. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, the cops are there because yeah, the uh that guy and his son who Dick bought a hotel room for. Yes, the, the father's dead. Murdered. Yeah, he said he reported his wallet stolen. At first, I thought he wasn't going to report it stolen. I thought he was just going to... But I guess he was just going to let the kids have the cash. Yeah. And not the, and not the cards. Yeah. Because who knows? I mean, nowadays, that, that credit card might have an unlimited amount on it. Yeah, that's that's true. And Bruce, what Bruce isn't Bruce still a mere millionaire now or something? Yeah. Well, I mean, Dick's the one with billions. Yeah, Dick, Bruce can come hit Dick up for a loan. <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> that'll be funny. Uh, but yeah. So then he calls Barbara. He's like, "Can you come back and be my alibi?" Right. Yeah. I know. Only gotten to the end of your street. That was convenient. Uh, would you mind coming back? So that's funny. Okay, then, yes, this issue was amazing for all the little, I guess they call them Easter eggs, but, like, the little jokes in there. So, okay, he puts a shirt on. It's Black Canary World Tour. <laughs> that's cute. But the mugs, the mugs are really where it's at. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Yeah, oh, we do get uh, that that happened. He says, I understand you used to be one of us. Why'd you leave the Bloodhaven police? So they're kind of mixing some stuff in there. So yeah, is Amy going to ever pop back up? Mm-hmm. I don't That'd know. Mm. Too many criminals. So yeah, so the cops are like, oh yeah, you paid for a hotel room for this guy. So maybe, you know. You want right, to get- and then he says, is his son okay? And they're like, oh, we didn't know about a son. That's pretty interesting that you do. Maybe you're trying to get romantic and he didn't reciprocate, so you killed him. Yeah. Uh, and you cut out his heart. So yeah, but first he has the Gotham Rogues mug. What sports team is that supposed to be? I don't Do know. know. Looks like the shadow, but I don't yeah, I don't know. I mean, I assume Gotham Rogues, it sounds like it's supposed to be are the Knights are usually supposed to be the football team, right? Yeah. Maybe it's like baseball or basketball. Hockey? I don't know. I love Barbara coming back. How's it going? Being accused of murder, you? (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) What's the nature of your relationship? We've I've been wondering that myself. (laughs) I know that was funny. Yeah, wait, but first before they get to that, there it is. The best mug, my favorite Easter egg. The someday sometimes you just can't get rid of a bomb mug from back in '66. Yeah. Amazing. But yeah, Barbara's the alibi. She's like, I, uh, I have GPS on my I know, the look they give each other and how he has that like <laughs> buff of breath. Uh, but what about it? It? What about this little retcon? They both have a law, law degree. Like now when he went to But do you know. think Dick really has a law degree or do you think he was kidding? Well, I think people were saying, I think it's a retcon where now they're saying he went to Hudson for law, but he didn't finish, you know. All right, that's what I want. Oh yeah, I'm just I'm just curious because just because you say something like it could be a lie. I mean, because at one point Barbara did have a law deg- did have a law degree, so I mean that makes that makes sense. It's hard to keep up. Does she have a PhD right now, though? I'm not sure. Maybe. Like, because they haven't had her being a librarian, and that's kind of what she was, what she was before. But yeah, I was wondering because she says. Really? Because I have a law degree and Dick, oh yeah, so do I. Like, does he really have a law degree or is he just joking? I can see it going either way. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, I think originally he was going for business, but now that's what everyone's saying. Did they retcon where both of them went for law instead of, you know, whatever they originally had? I don't know. Is, are people just saying that because of this issue? I mean, there's been no other evidence, right? Mm-mm. Okay. I was just checking. I didn't miss anything. Well, what I think, because I just got done reading robin the bronze age omnibus is of course they've really forgotten that in the 60s and 70s dick was super into journalism he oh, was okay. always on his high school newspaper and he was on the hudson herald <laughs> the newspaper the newspaper up there and yeah he was majoring in he was majoring in business mm-hmm. uh then but yeah it's kind of like i mean maybe they didn't do that because it's i don't know too superman um, but yeah, it would be really easy for, uh, somebody to pick that back up and have Dick be a journalist again, oh, yeah. because he was really, because he was really into it, um, before, before he went new teen Titans and basically was superheroing full time. Mm. So, but yeah, it'll be interesting if he has a law, if he has a law degree, I mean, that kind of makes them both a little bit older. Although, who knows? Barbara's kind of supposed to be a genius, so she might be younger. They're not clear on if one's younger or if they're both the same age. I don't know. I mean, because obviously it used to be Barbara was older, but mm. I think that's been changed. Age is very fudgy. But yes, anyway, okay. How about that? Because see, yeah, because see, then he has like that funny face. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, is that because it's amusing to him that Barbara's totally schooling them about, you know, you'd be embarrassingly incompetent, or is it also because heh <laughs> I'm pretending to have a law degree. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like, if you're accusing, accusing him when he has an alibi, and there's absolutely no direct evidence linking him to the crime, that would be embarrassingly incompetent. Right. Well, it's what even police department. Uh, right. They are incompetent. Uh, well, you never know. I mean, they just need to cover all their bases. I know. They didn't need to come on quite so strong, but hey, you know. 
On the one hand, I appreciate they don't hold their punches with a rich dude. That's uh, true. Although they don't know how rich Dick is. Also, I like how his puppy is like good size for carrying. It's cute. Uh, he's a very good dog as well. That wait, she'll just tolerate that. So he's like, yes, if Elliot the son survived, he has a good idea where he went. You know, probably that homeless camp the kids have. And then, okay, so they're at the bottom floor, and he presses a secret elevator. So now they're going down. And then there's kind of this schematic. Well, it's like a head. It's like it's like you're looking at them from the ceiling, yeah. Right, so he has some kind of underground bunker thing, I guess. It looks like, yeah. Because it looks like there's a pile of rubble in one corner. I think he's like, he's probably, I don't know if he's, just like it's like a work in progress, maybe. There's a well, yeah. there's a bed down there too. Looks like. Yep, and a couch. Mm, unless he's, unless he just converted like another apartment into. This. Well, yeah, it looks. I mean, it looks like they went down to the yeah, basement. So, all right. Maybe it was originally like a basement apartment or something. Yep. But yeah, the barber said she got pictures of all the pictures and everything the cops were showing them he's like thanks for spying on the police anytime but he, All he, right. he says he needs to make a call to who my brother uh, Tim Drake thought of by many as the best Robin I totally get it um, I'd say number two but yeah well, yeah, obviously we would. But here's the thing: I feel like the best. It's bad to have even to have that dis- to have that discussion because it's totally objective and or subjective, excuse me. And there's no right answer. I mean, he was the best Robin at having his own independent book so far. But you know, so is Tim just joking, or does or is Bruce developing a sense of humor? He's like, Batman wanted me to give you something. It's a wallet chain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Kids can't steal your money. <laughs> and as an added bonus, you confront a soft metal band in the early 2000s. <laughs> I know. I felt like... I don't even think... I was around in the early 2000s, and I didn't even... That should be, like, my jam, but I didn't even really pick up on soft metal bands using wallet chains in the early 2000s. I was neglectful in my youth. I wasn't paying attention to the culture. And yes, that, I am never living this down, am I? Oh, of course not. And then we get another classic. As they've done in times past, they take the train. Mm-hmm. I heard about what Alfred left you. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we get another classic of them riding the train and talking. Yep. Dick, Phil, and Tim in. Gonna use it to help. Of course you are. I have some ideas. I have a meeting in Gotham tomorrow, which well, I guess we'll get next month. <laughs> I don't know if it's next month or the month after, but yeah, he the, there's a co- upcoming cover where it just shows he's like, I don't know if he was a press conference. He's like, I have an idea. Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, so basically, Dick's basically filling Tim in and telling him, you know, I need you to infiltrate the homeless kids. Yep, but I need Tim drink, and you won't be alone. Yeah, so I don't know where they met because they didn't meet at his place. They met somewhere else because he's taken him to his place. Yeah, I don't know. Unless he uh, just met him. Met him Maybe the- he met him at the train station. <laughs> a tall building by the train station. You got a puppy. Dick said she was going to the pound. Ha, sure. That sounds plausible. Uh, and then me- I like, you want me to take this dog? Yes. Why? People are more approachable with a lovable dog. Barbara, it's true. That's just science. I think that is true. That is just science. Also, she needs a walk. That's also true. Just science. <laughs> mm. Yeah, how old well, do you think Tim's supposed to be? I don't know. I mean, before New 52 hit, I believe he was at least 17 or 18. But of course, he probably got de-aged after New 52, so... But he's not going to school. Well, I mean, that, he's not really in enough books. We have no idea what he's doing, right? 
Exactly. I don't need another Damien book. I need a Tim book. Damn it. I need Tim back. Like, he's just existing. I mean, hopefully, isn't he supposed to pop up in Batman soon? Maybe? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I but. love I love they're on the radio and Tim's like, oh, so Bab stayed the night, huh? I slept in dick. I slept on the couch. I see. Yeah, my favorite one of my favorite things is yeah, that picture of Barbara. You know I'm on this channel, right? And the way they drew her is like I don't know, a little internet thing. Yeah, cartoon, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I'm on this channel. Well I do now. She must have said it loud because he kinda is whimsy. Can we talk about something else? Like the potential serial killer cutting out people's hearts? Yes, a much more comfortable conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, for bats, it is more comfortable than feelings. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah, I guess Tim's like talking to these kids for an hour. <laughs> yep. hmm. Well, you know, he's got the lovable dog. But yeah, Elliot feels safe here. But yeah, it says his father was killed by a man without a heart. He's not the only one. Yeah, Too many kids in there have the same story. Yep. And uh, oh, here you did. Action's coming. Dick stands up on that roof. Tim, you might want to give the dog to Elliot and suit up. We have trouble. But the train ride was uh, something. Not not all the '90s goodness you're getting, kid. This time, kids, no, because Brutal and uh, Electrocutioner show up. Did they work for Blockbuster before? Uh, maybe at some. I think Brutal did. Um, can't remember. The Electrocutioner might have at some point. Oh, yes. But then Brutal goes over to uh, check out Robin number one for that fight club. I was going to say, I figure that must be the. Yeah. So then they're all like, oh, Blockbuster, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, because they're like, oh, you know, the kids are like, what do you want? And, you know, it's like, oh, well. Blockbuster gets a piece of all, every crime in Bloodhaven, you know, even, you know, you kids like ripping off, you know, pennies. Right. And he's like, I don't pretend to understand henchman job satisfaction, but stealing from homeless kids has got to feel like a career low. Well, it yeah, seems love- very true because that is pretty sad. Yeah, because Brutal's like saying, oh, Blockbuster can't be looking weak by going easy on homeless kids. Like, see, you know, there's a stick hitting Brutal in the head. <laughs> And then we have this little visual where Dick turns his Eskrima sticks into a staff for for Tim. I love that. Yes. I'm, yeah. They've done it. I know Daredevil did that in the 90s. That is awesome. But no, I love, I mean, again, circus acrobat, him, Dick just standing on that wire. Yeah, that's pretty snazzy. <laughs> But yeah, in the, the art in these, it's just, in this, it's just so good, especially splash page. Yeah, where they fight them, and brutal and executioner kind of suck. <laughs> like it really doesn't take them that much to I'm basically just punching bags. Yeah, get rid of those dudes. Oh yeah, you're right. This will probably be next issue because what happens is well, the someone, fire. Yeah, someone sets the whole place on fire. Uh, but it's not the uh, Brutal or Electrocutioner. Mm, but Tim can sm- sell ex- uh, smell accelerant. Uh, Tim, I don't think Blockbusters people said this. Yeah, I know. It was him. Heartless. Oh, snap. Oh yeah, we're having this is like a very compressed timeline in these issues. I mean, this is just I mean, we've really just done like two days. Yeah. <laughs> it's only been yeah, maybe two days, yeah. Yeah, because well, I mean he got the puppy and Barbara came. Maybe that was maybe this is the third day. The third day max, I think. I don't know. I think it's Second day, because wasn't that whole one night where it's just, you know, he got the dog, Barbara showed up, then they went out for pizza, and then he bought pizza. Yeah, it's just, it might have been all one night. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, I so. First, I thought the first two was all one night. Yeah, and then this is the next Yeah, day. that might be. So, yeah, it's like. Oh, right, yeah, he got the puppy, and Barbara showed up to tell him about the will, and then they hung out, and then 
that stuff. And yeah, now it's the next day. He's been accused of murder. Tim comes in. Yeah. And then it'll be like the night. It'll be, I'm assuming, the night of the second night into the morning of the third night for the next week. So yeah, we're moving slow. <laughs> but yeah, again, another A plus issue. Again, that art, even just that last page of Dick's hand holding the stick and it's yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah, you're right. Spot on. A plus. A plus, and we had that amazing. Someday, you just can't get rid of a bomb uh, exactly. <laughs> bug. And Tom Taylor, I'm not giving up. I'm gonna. You're gonna talk to us. <laughs> we make it sound like a threat, Phil. <laughs> I mean, we just want. No, we love the books. We want to talk to him. Hey, you want to be the first Australian we've talked to. I oh, love you Australian? Guy. Ray. How exciting. <laughs> what? Yes. All right. Ask, ask how he feels about kangaroos. Uh, it's a lot of he probably doesn't. He probably doesn't love them as much as I do. Australians never do. They're like, oh, they're annoying. Well, they eat them, too. It's a lot of meat. <laughs> Sad. Sad. All right. Well, A, I would say. Hey, of course, yes. I want the A plus. All right, so what should we get? What do you want to get to first? Batman thirty five. Well, I guess I'd say yeah, we should do those two more quickly because the really juicy one is the Batman Adventures twelve. Am I right? Oh, oh yeah, I, I like, I really like that one too. Yeah. Yeah, that one was, that one was pretty epic. Really, we just want to cover. The old ones, to remind everyone, how did some of those delightful items get in the Batcave? <laughs> and first up, we have... Hold on, I gotta find it. Yeah, I'm pulling it up on... 35, 730. DC Dinosaur DC Island. DC Universe. Oh, yeah, which... What? DC Universe Infinite, kids. It's on there, so... Yeah, it's also... In my in my fat book, on the bus four. Yeah, this has two. I mean, the big one is the dinosaur island, but also it has Dick Grayson author, which is fun. <laughs> oh yeah. So here it is. Let's focus on dinosaur island. So how from whence does that giant T Rex come? It comes from Dinosaur Island, which I have to give them this crazy man credit in the 1940s. I think this is 1940s. 1946, I think it said, yeah. 1946, okay. Yeah, see, he is smarter than the people who did Jurassic Park. Because he was like, I want to have a Dinosaur Island. I'll make robots. Oh, there you go. That's pretty smart. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but then that they way they can also be turned for evil. Although he's not that smart because dinosaurs and humans never interact, never overlapped in the timeline. They are millions of years apart. Yeah, but a robot dinosaur can keep in a back cave. A real dinosaur would be much more uh, complicated to keep as a pet. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, sorry. I meant at the dude's dinosaur island, though. Then he also has cavemen there. And I was like, well, that's inaccurate. Cavemen and dinosaurs did not live together. <laughs> But I suppose it could be Dinosaur Island with a Paleolithic caveman small segment. But I just want to slide that in there. Don't let comic books trick you. Dinosaurs and humans did not overlap. And then... Oh, yes. They're a bit, they go to the Big Game Hunters dinner because... Always, back in the 40s, everyone wanted Batman to, and Robin to be members of their club. Oh, so they're yeah. like, oh, well, Batman, you hunt you hunt criminals. That's a very dangerous game, so you could be in our club. Batman and Robin hunt the most perilous game. Man. That's right. And then they're all like, no, a man or a man hunt wouldn't compare with a dinosaur hunt. So they're like, Batman, you and Robin fight these dinosaurs for charity. <laughs> A whopping five thousand dollars. Which can you imagine how much Batman would have would be able to demand for charity now? Oh, I know. I mean, again, it's nineteen forty six. What is that? Five million now? 
I don't know, yeah, probably a lot, a lot, but yeah. Yeah, you'd have to ask. So I just love how they come up with these goofy ideas. And they're like, oh yeah, so Batman's not going to fight crime, he's going to fight dinosaurs for charity in this issue. Whatever, let's do it. Yeah. No, they do. But of course, someone is dastardly, and he wants which dude... Oh, shoot. I'm oh, forgetting his name. Did you mention the most important part? Batman and Robin have to do it without their, any of their weapons. Well, that's right. They have to do it without their utility belts because they have to be like cavemen. Even though, remember, cavemen and dinosaurs did not overlap. Mm. Batman without weapons and murdering him will be very simple now. Get their weapons off. And then Stephen Chase is a bad dude, and he wants to turn to a life of crime, so... Mm -hmm. He's like, ha-ha! Instead of this guy who's doing it for charity, I'm gonna do it and really try to kill Batman. You know he's evil. Look at that mustache. Oh, wow, for real? He's totally evil. Yeah, like, I, and like the chin and stuff. I mean, like, dude has evil... The dude has evil... He looks like that cartoon guy Dick Dastardly from Wacky nah. Races. I mean, the guy, he has, you're right, he has evil written all over his face. We're doing me now? Sorry, Charlie, I had to make fun of your mustache. Uh. So. Uh, uh, he's changing stuff up, and we get to see Robin being a boy wonder, because Batman's like, oh, hey, he'll throw that rock made of sponge, and Robin's like, no, it's not, it's a real rock, because it's glinting in the sun. Crash. Batman, bless your eagle eyes. Yeah. Robin with an eye, a Robin with an eyes of an eagle. Uh, and then, oh, these uh, a dinosaurs are throwing them around. A styrax. Batman's. Finally, Batman's like, Breach, what's up, dude? You said this was for a game. And then, haha, -ha, uh oh, evil laughter from the forest. So you know it's bad. And then he's, and then, of course, like all evil villains, he can't resist not, he can't not run his mouth. <laughs> so he's like, oh, it's me, Chase, and I'm gonna murder you, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> You know you should zip it. Oh my lord! But yeah, they're fighting. What is it? It looks like a triceratops, but they say it's a styracosaurus. I know. Yeah, I forgot to look that up. And then there's one in the water. It looks like the Loch Ness monster throws rock. That yeah, does. Yeah. So then they. Yeah, I think Batman. That one in the the Loch Ness monster. I think Batman. Kind of disables it or something, and then they take pieces of it. But yeah, he like jams a like a branch down its throat. Yeah, so they take pieces of it to make weapons, so they can fight off the cavemen. Robot cavemen. That's right, robot cavemen. I love Robin through shooting that bow and arrow. <gasps> Gulp! It's almost like killing a real man. I know. So precious. And Batman's like. Batman's like, quit your crying. It's just a robot. They're machines. And then they go away. I don't understand. Why did he save us? I was just waiting for it. Don't be gay. It's just a robot. <laughs> ah, that would have been a good callback to, uh, to the last time they fought robot dinosaurs. <laughs> but he's like, he's saving it for smart. Hmm. So then they're both trying to be brave for the other one. Wish I could sleep. I thought I'd be scared, but I'm not. Batman's worried, even though he doesn't act like it. Batman, Robin's taking this okay. He's a great kid. I won't let him down. I'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> so then they rope down a mechanical pterodactyl, which, for whatever reason, is not controlled by the flying panel. Seems suspiciously convenient, but okay. 
Mm -hmm. So Robin gets set up on that and woo, he catapults off. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is that? The bat plane? No. And they have the most primitive yet awesome of weapons a bag filled with water. Uh... Almost, you could almost say a water balloon. <laughs> that does seem to be what it is. And bingo, a direct hit. Uh... Fries up the uh, the switchboard and boom. And Batman. That's it. Decks him off the top of the dinosaur. I mean, right. <laughs> Caught your own trap. Oh uh, yes, and then so why did Chase want to kill Batman? He wanted to start a crime combine in Gotham. I mean, I guess at least props to that guy for thinking ahead, thinking and planning ahead. Oh yeah, he's like, yeah, Batman's gonna be weaponless. Now's my chance. Mm -hmm. And to think I should do something about Batman before I turn to crime in Gotham. That was also smart. I mean, not smart enough because he still had to be all wah -ha -ha when he was out in the woods revealing his plan. But what is this, the reporters? Where's Chase? How about some pics? Where's Chase? They're in a cage, but they're dusting but... out a stronger one for him at the state pen. I could just see Adam. Also, I. Same. Also, I love this where the guy's like, well, Batman, you won against tougher odds. And Batman says, you can say that again, brother. I know, man. It's like, <laughs> it's like, who is he, Hulk Hogan? Brother. <laughs> I know, it feels a little bit jovial. But there, that is how, that's where the T-Rex comes from in the original Dinosaur Island. And then also, which was not what we went to highlight, but I will say the next one, Dick Grayson author, is pretty funny because he's reading comics and he's like, these comics suck. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I mean, he doesn't say that because he's more respectful, but okay. some of the stories aren't very true to life. And then Bruce, of course, he's like, oh, interesting. You should say that because the editor of those comics is a friend of mine. Of course. Of course he is. <laughs> uh, Dick. Oh, boy. I always wanted to visit a comics editor. <laughs> uh. And then his friend, hello, Bruce, old boy. <laughs> it's so 40s. <laughs> and then he's like, all right, Dick, you write me a story. And he's like, oh, man, okay. Uh -huh. He's very frustrated. I like that picture of him and his typewriter when he's like, ah. <laughs> And then they solve a crime. Whatever. But what's funny is at the end Dick says, I can't think of something to write about. What's the matter with the case we just finished? There's real human interest in Big Ed Conroy. <laughs> you know, I never thought of that. It never occurred to me to use real facts for a story. Really, Dick? Really? Comics have to be so then He writes it. And here's Dick's budding writing career. You know, also, I would like to see this revived. If they don't want to revive Dick as a journalist, they should revive him as a comic. They should revive him as a comic book writer. <laughs> hey, you know what? You laugh, but like back in the 80s, like they had Steve Rogers like working it for Marvel Comics. No way, really? <laughs> yeah. And like they were going to assign <laughs> Iron Man, and he's like, I don't know if I'm really suited for that book. He's like, maybe Captain America. So, yeah, basically, Steve Rogers was like drawing himself. He yeah. wrote his own book. He was, no, he was drawing it. Yeah, no, he was. Oh, he was drawing it. That's funny. I don't know if we've ever seen Dick have any artist specific artistic abilities, but we know he did journalism, and at least he wrote this. So, I think maybe he, uh, he needs to get back to that. And of course, we've got. Bruce, here's hoping your literary career lasts 100 years. Well, only 19 more to go. They're getting close. Uh -huh. All right. Quality. Now it's time for the Penny Plunderers. Oh, yeah. 
with Joe Coin. What's his name? Coin. His last name is Coin. I think I'm looking. It's weird on DC Universe Infinite, uh, World's Finest 30. It's like it, they, it was like a huge found. It's just like the same pages over and over. Yeah, I mean, the Penny Plunderers, like, let's be real, this one would not be, or this one would not be anyone that, this isn't really one that people would be reading if it they didn't take the giant penny back to the Batcave. Oh, yeah. And people were like, where did this come from? Yeah, Joe Coin. <laughs> Get it, giant so, yep. He tries to become he tries to become a robber, but he's foiled in his very first attempt to buy pennies. <laughs> he says, "Pennies and coppers, they did this to me. Pennies, coppers, copper pennies. I hate them all." Yeah, sir. Like my rhyme symbol will be pennies, <sighs> which is a very interesting vow. So then he starts dealing in penny slots. <laughs> Sorry, I was pulling up the of my uh oh, yeah, are you able to get it up? Page here. So yeah, Joe Coin really does not have a very successful career because he goes to prison on his first try and then pretty much his first one out. Well, not as pretty soon afterwards he gets busted. So okay. He manages to rob one bank. He takes a rare collection of antique penny banks. And then already Batman and Robin are like, some dude has a weird obsession with pennies. I bet he's going to go visit this stamp exhibit. <laughs> and lo and behold, he does. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. And so, of course, Batman and Robin are, boom, already there. Ready to bust them up. Oh, yeah. And there's the giant penny. So the giant penny isn't even Joe Coyne's penny. It's part of the exhibit that he's trying to rob. I also enjoy that this is such a this is such a superhero thing that the exhibit with the penny and the stamp also has a giant size model of stamp tongs so that Batman can jump off of the stamp tongs like it's a springboard. I know. Oh my god. This I mean, this this is even before this, but this so reminds this could be like a Batman 66 episode. Yeah, it totally is. Yeah, that's true. They really missed out on on having this one because, yeah, it would be great because that is just such a thing. That you're like, that is such a comic book thing because, yes, I can understand having a giant mock-up of the stamp, a giant mock-up of the penny, but a giant mock-up of working stamp tongs feels highly unlikely in the real world. Oh, yeah, especially then. It's like, come on. Right. Yep. So uh, they're foiled, but they do get away. Oh, Except, but yes, they, they, they you're like you're saying the whole stamp exhibit, and then as Batman's punching the one guy out, my job is to stamp out crime. <laughs> yep. And he's knocked out, or maybe not knocked out, injured. It's a rule of pennies. <laughs> a rule of pennies. That's right. But Robin caught one of the dudes. Yep. They got skinny. Do you think skinny will talk and skinny squeals? And unfortunately, skinny is going to pay for that. And then, oh man, Joe Coin, seriously? His hideout is in the Penny Arcade? Dude. It's so I, obvious. I know. It's like anytime Joker is is hiding anywhere with like clowns or you know, or like the toy factory or something. <laughs> yeah, it's true. 
All right, Skinny's been shot. Huh. It's Skinny, Robin says. He's been shot. Tough, but that's <laughs> always the risk a fellow takes when he turns criminal. I know. That's, like, so harsh. That's pretty 1940s Batman, too. Like, well, <laughs> that's what happens when you go against the law. <laughs> He's a criminal. I know. Oh, my Lord. But so some now. someone put a penny on his lips. <laughs> That's gangland, gangland way of saying they've sealed his lips. It's their warning that Astoli's life is not worth a copper penny when he squeals to a copper. Wow. That's and, a lot of that's a lot of play on words there. I don't think about it. Ain't that the truth, copper? Oh, jeez. I swear every it seems like in this era every uh, every issue they had that they had one word they like focused on because like remember the boner episode this time this time it's called oh, of course I do <laughs> of course I remember that boner yes how could you not <laughs> oh, I know I still, I still laugh I listen back to that but no, no it's, that's... but this time just replace that with copper yeah I know you're right you're right yeah same copper. So again, Batman is suffering from glass jaw syndrome in this uh in in this issue. He keeps getting he keeps getting knocked upside the head with that roll of pennies. I mean plot device, yes. Yep. So then of course Joe Coin has taken their utility belts, but he says, here's two cents. That's all your lives will be worth. And then this is very Times period specific because he throws in two pennies and it just so happens he throws in one copper penny and one zinc penny Ouch. that was made during the war when they were saving copper. And that's how somehow Batman. He goes. uses salt. Oh, because somehow they've been conveniently caught in a kitchen. Like, yeah, there's the salt. There's a spice rack over there. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Again, another product of its time. Oh, they ripped out all the telephone wires so they can't call for help. But, yeah. But they have salt and some zinc. So he made a little battery and tap out an SOS. And then, of course, again, because this is the 40s, there are actually operators manning the phone. Yep. So they're like, oh, there's an SOS at the Penny Arcade. In Morse code, SOS, Penny Arcade on Elm Avenue. Hurry, Batman. The cops let him out. So yeah, I can see why they did have, they. I mean, to update this story, you actually have to change a lot. Because aside from the dude's weird obsession with pennies, okay, that's not a big deal, but yeah, a lot of this is really specific to the 1940s. I mean, yeah, okay, somebody could throw you a zinc penny, but the likelihood nowadays that someone would be like, oh, I just happen to have this. I mean, that would be what worth something, I imagine. Oh, oh my yeah. god, they gotta be really yeah, rare, so. rare. And these days, if someone guy says, Oh, I'm obsessed with pennies, you probably just give me your pennies, be like, Oh, here we go. Right, yeah, like, can we get rid of pennies? They cost more to make than they're worth. Oh, yeah, they cost two cents to make a penny, yeah. I know, I think we should be getting rid of those. All right, so we know he's going to a penny slot thing on the houseboats. Oh, the machines were rigged to send out tear gas. Oh, but look, we got the bat plane, and look who's uh, surf surfing behind, water skiing behind it. Rob. That's right. Surf's up. <laughs> across the water. Wait a minute. This might be the first uh, official Dick Grayson butt shot when he's on the water. Uh, I find that hard to imagine. This is already 1946. I'm sure we've had plenty of butt oh, shots before. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the guys in the speedboat are shooting at him until he comes out but hits him with his uh, water skis and says, the ski's the limit. And then mind if I knock wood? Oh, so groovy. Whoa. I don't think he meant it that way. He's hitting with a wood water ski. 12. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right. They run into the warehouse. Mm, yeah, they run. Yep. Locks himself in. Okay. Stand aside. Oh, and then. 
there's a payphone in there. And Joe Coin's like, I'll call the boys. But, oh, no, he only has five cents in pennies. Uh-huh. And he needs a nickel. No. Betrayed by pen. And, yes. I love And then, unlike most any other criminal, he says, yes, I know when I'm beaten. <laughs> So he gives up. Oh, but look at the end. The, the uh, newspaper is only three cents. I know. It costs five cents to make a phone call and only three. Guess that's because the phone is some very fancy newfangled technology. That's right. It takes a I mean, lot. It's not that newfangled in the 40s, but more takes, newfangled than a newspaper. It takes a lot of money to run those telephones. I guess. And they're wires. It's running all those wires. So, yeah, that's the end of Joe Coin because... He it's the forties, so he gets sentenced to death because he's a murderer, and yeah, he doesn't come back. That's it. Uh, and then for whatever, and then for whatever reason, Batman and Robin end up with the mu- with the penny from the museum. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even though it feels like their souvenir really should be the five pennies that Coin had that he needed instead of a nickel, because that's what really got him. Almost, gross. but five cents. That's more. Oh, well, what really they should have made as the souvenir is the zinc penny. Mm. I mean, if that's you, the one that really saved their bacon. If you want to talk about like an updated uh, version of the giant penny, remember how they did it in Batman the Animated Series? Mm, there was that yeah, almost. Just, it was it, that episode almost got him, where all the villains are saying how they almost killed Batman. Oh yeah, I always the main thing I remember from that one is Killer Croc. What a big rock! <laughs> but but no, it was two. It was Two Face. He was ba- he was he was trying to rob the um, uh, Gotham Mint, and Batman tried to stop him, and he ties him to this giant penny, and then Two Face yeah. flips it. He's like, ah, oh, it'll break every bone or your in your body, or if it comes flat down, it'll squash you. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which because a lot of people think, oh, it's a coin. It must be Two Face. But yeah, really, it's that random dude, Joe Coin. Yep. And, like, we didn't read, but the one in, I can't remember now, it was one of the Batman Chronicles that I originally thought we should read, but it's very short, and it's really gruesome. Like, in the updated version, Robin's only in it for, like, half a second, and Joe Coin gets squashed to death by the giant penny. And yeah. that's the last panel, as he's laying there, squished under the penny, bleeding. I was like, ah, we don't want to do that one. Of course, now I just talked about it, so. And I was sad, because in the Batman Chronicles, when they updated the dinosaur, no Robin is mentioned at all. It's just a Batman story. Hmm. I know, right? Which is why we have Batman Adventures instead. Yep. And this Batman Adventures, because I think the difference is... Well, it's, a, it's the later series, yeah. because yeah. Right, it's the later series, and I think it doesn't have the the. I think the yeah. Batman Advent. I think the one that... Because there was The Batman Adventures and then The Adventures of Batman and Robin, I think, or Batman and Robin Adventures. I, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, it was originally The Batman Adventures and then Batman and Robin. Yeah, now it's, yeah. Yeah, The Batman and Robin Adventures. And then later, after they did, I can't remember now if this, oh yeah, this is after. So then they did Batman Gotham Adventures and then now the later one, Batman Adventures. So I believe the difference is the earlier one has the, and this one has no the. Yes, it's not the Batgirl one on the cover. Yeah, this one is uh, Night Nightwing on the cover. Yeah, this one's from two thousand four. Yep, Mayo for the duo dynamic. Um, so I guess. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you find it a little ironic the cover his uh, chest and the emblem almost looks red? <laughs> that is that is funny. Yeah, I mean it is. I mean, yeah, it's like pink on mine. Yeah, I guess. Oh, but yeah, it's like reddish it's or pink. Oh, yeah. A sign of things to come. Yes. So the backup story is the one that is about. Should we save that one for last, or do you want to do that one quick and then go back? I mean, it doesn't matter either way. Because I mean, they're both Nightwing stories, so. All right, let's save that one because it's cute. And also, I'm digital, so it's kind of a pain to flip back and forth. Yeah, I'm digital too, so yeah. All right, so the main one, the duo dynamic, is Mayor Hill for well, Hamilton Hill. It's mayor of Gotham has moved to Bloodhaven. 
and he's he, having some problems. He gets a visitor in the middle of the night, the Riddler with a knife in his back. Yep. Mm. And the only clues, he says, the cellar and time flies. Well, ticket, cellar, time flies, yes. Yep. So the cops show up, and then Nightwing shows up. Yep, and the cops are like, hey, thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, we love you. Yep, and then he's out there talking on talking on TV. The reporters, yep. And then he goes to visit the ticket seller, Simon Travel. Nicholas Simon. And he's like, oh, you were just on TV. It was pre-recorded. Come on. But yeah, he's asking him about it. Has Riddler bought a ticket on Thursday? Uh, the Gotham City leaves tomorrow at 10. He paid cash and we parted ways. Mm. And he hears something. And oh, it's Batman. Or someone in the back room. And yeah, Nightwing dives in and it's Batman. He's like, what are you doing in Bloodhaven? Nigma was working for me. What? What? And Batman found two bullet holes in the back wall. Why? <laughs> and, and he's like, I was robbed last month. I wasn't that good of a shot. Let's see if my aim's improved, Batman. I doubt it. You're too jittery. <laughs> I mean, he's pointing a gun at Batman. He's lucky. He's, yeah. I don't need this. I'm a travel agent. That's it. It's time to move. And, th and Dick, you want a Batman in the alley? Sure, let me handle that. If he had information to add to this case, you just scared him off. That guy scared him so quickly is information. Hey, this isn't Gotham. People aren't used to you. Hmm. They seem used to Nightwing. How often do you go on television? I love that one. It's like dramatic arm movement. Oh, so you don't approve. <laughs> uh, he's like, yeah, I got a different style than you, Bruce. That's why I moved to Bloodhaven. I'm not your junior partner anymore. I'd rather help the citizens than scare them half to death. In this case, in my city, that's how we do things. I know. He, he gets Bruce to Bruce, man. He's like, if you want in on this case in my city, that's how we do it. I know. Uh, I, wonder if Bruce, I wonder if Bruce ever regrets being like that because I feel like all his kids have definitely picked up on it. Picked up on that. Like, oh, well, you're my territory. Oh, you're my city. We got to do it my way. Oh, yeah, I was like, yeah, Bruce, that's on you. That's on you. Everyone's always you know, throwing that back in Bruce's face. I learned it from watching you, Dad. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, honestly, if I were the Justice League people like Superman and stuff, I'd throw it in his face, too. Like, oh, well, you came to Metropolis. This is my city. We're going to do it my way. <laughs> Then they, uh, yeah, you know, on the way, on the way to the uh, Hamilton Hills place, Riddler broke the window of a jewelry store. So they're talking to this jeweler. Mm. But yeah, he's only been an American citizen for five years. And he says, "Why tell me? I trust Nightwing because you great man on TV news." That's right. And then he's like, and he's like, no, now come, I'll give you a music box to give to your girlfriend, Catwoman. He's like, ah. what? <laughs> I read about you and her in People's Inquirer. Look, get inside. We're not. No, I couldn't. <laughs> Look at his face. He's laughing. Mm hmm. But he did end up take. Wait, what does he have? He still has a box in his hand. Yeah, did he take it? I. Mm. But yeah, there's six. They have six key witnesses. So he's like, we should split up. And he's like, yeah, that would it would stretch our investigation out ad infinitum. Anyway, Batman's like, that's Latin. Time flies. Yes, so. The Templar Tempest Fugit in Latin. The Clock King's real name is Temple Fugit. That's close. Enough. I know. I mean, honestly, his parents were just, I mean, come on. You name your kid Temple Fugit. You're just asking 
for your I mean it's the same thing like Edward Nigma. You need I like Oh yeah. You guys were just asking for him to become a villain. It's oh, yeah. too spot on. Victor Von Doom, Otto Octavius. Yeah, you're just asking for trouble. Mm. But selling as an as in vendor, like the man who sold Nigma that train ticket. Nicholas Simon. Packing up. Mm. Time to leave. This was the prime location to witness Hill's years of exile and humiliation. But clearly time and all because of the Riddler's obsessive curiosity. What did he care who's mayor in Gotham? And what does Batman care if I try to snuff one of his nasty playmates? But yeah, then Batman shows up. He says, yeah, Riddler's cane and only fires two bullets. You snuck up on Nigma from behind and he fired wild into your wall after you stabbed him. I was breaking into his computer files. And then did you find out you're working for Penguin? Ha ha! Kaboom! Gives him old, Blows something up. Gives him the old smoke bomb. <laughs> he says the Penguin... Explosion. You- now somebody... Now he's running out. He like... Oh, he gasses Nightwing with his little wrist thing. And then there's the traffic camera. They're like, that was an explosion. Mm. So yeah, Batman and Nightwing are coming out. Batman's like, he knew exactly where to throw that bomb. Mm. Where'd you park the car? I'm driving. <laughs> That's Batman, we don't have time for him. Nightwing's like, I know my way around Bloodhaven. You don't. Hey, I like the new upholstery. Just drive. <laughs> yeah. Batman being no fun. So yeah, Clock King's figuring out his car is no match for the Batmobile, so he drives off the overpass onto that train. Yep. The 105 to Star City is never late. And Batman, I can make that jump in Nightwing. You don't have to. Not getting away. I said no, Batman. Oh. And barely grabs the back of the train. <laughs> yep. Such a fine example of the importance of timing. Yeah, because Clock Another King's second. Trying, Clock King's trying and to. Stop. And he says, say in another second, oh, another voice, you'll be on your way to jail. Boom. Uh-huh. Thanks for the lift, fellas. No sweat, Nightwing. We owe you plenty. I mean, coming down off of the traffic helicopter. Yeah. Nightwing's like, I told you not to pull that stunt. I know how to get around Bloodhaven. Just couldn't. He's like, move. Grabs him. Not so fast, Clock King. Oh, yes. This is what I love. Looks like Mr. Simon got caught in the nick of time. Still haven't gotten. (laughs) You still haven't gotten over the puns. Oh, shush. You love it. (laughs) So classic. So classic. I love this cough at the end. He's like, the Bloodhaven PD thanks you again, Nightwing. You and your friend there. <laughs> yeah, Nightwing, you and what's his face? Yeah, good job. So you since when do you partner with your enemies? And then Batman, I have a different style than you, Nightwing. Oh, brother. These two. <laughs> yes, because Nigma was investigating the Penguins election in Gotham. I know the voting wasn't fair, but I can't prove it. <laughs> The Clock King has had a lifelong hatred of Mayor Hill. So you think you get fixed the last Gotham vote and Riddler found him out. <gasps> but how? I don't know yet, but I will. So that's what's next. You can fight City Hall. <laughs> uh, so he stole the election. Well, that's pretty cl- so that's pretty classic. I've forgotten it has one of my favorite things. You still still with the puns? Oh shush, you love it. <laughs> So he stole the election, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Whew. Maybe we shouldn't have done that one. That's a little sensitive nowadays. <laughs> All right. And now we get to the number one reason to read this, although this whole one was a treat. And now this features bringing it back to the T-Rex. 
uh, it's written by Dan Slott, who is, who's writing, a, who's written a lot of Marvel stuff. He's usually hit or miss with me. I either like his stuff, or I'm just like, so, but but no, well, this, this one's cute, but, but it's also like five pages or something. So yeah, this one's good. <laughs> yeah. So I love it. It's they defeat Batman. And I just defeated a robot dinosaur, and there was only one thought on my mind: Can we keep it? <laughs> no. No. Come on, it'd be great. We could keep it in the cave. But no, transporting something that large would risk undue attention to the Batmobile now. We'll talk about it at home. But we never did talk about it at home. That's just something grown-ups say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then this is just sad when they're like eating dinner or something. And like, I guess Bruce made Dick take down all his flying grace in post. I know! really sad. Yeah, because Alfred's like, oh, while cleaning Master Dick's room, I noticed all his circus posters have been removed. Yes, Alfred, when he decided to become Robin, we agreed it would be best not to remind people that Bruce Wayne's ward was a trained acrobat. It yeah, seems like way too big a sacrifice. How many people are in his room? Well, that's what I was going to say. It's like, okay, maybe don't mention it in public, but how about in his own room where you can control who comes in and out of there? You know, let him keep Yeah, it I mean, and if you're worried that somebody, I mean... Just lock the door if you're worried that somebody's going to creep in during a gala or something. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, understandable, but still a large sacrifice. No more than I made when I was Dick's age. Oh, whatever, Bruce. <laughs> I, and I love Dick's like hang, hanging uh, like above the door while they're talking, you know, eavesdropping. I know. Talking. Yeah. Uh, but the wisdom of Alfred, I remember, in order to maintain your secret life, you never kept any trophies. Never let others know of your achievements. But Master Dick is different, sir. He grew up in the spotlight of the center ring. He's not you. <laughs> he needs to shine. And maybe if he can no longer share his accomplishments with the world, maybe it would be enough if he shared them with us. Boom. The robot's there. Yeah, the next morning, just like that. Yeah, the robot. Well, there's the other thing too. Even if Bruce didn't want him to keep those posters in his room, what about hanging them in the cave somewhere? Right. Yeah. Exactly. At Seems that, like at that point, only Bruce, Dick, and Alfred were in that cave. It's like, yeah, you know, nobody's gonna see him hang him down here. Right. Yeah. Seems a bit much. Uh. But yeah, Dick's like, yeah, we always referred to that part of the cave as the trophy room, but the truth was, it was my trophy room. Testament to our victories and our legacy. There's the penny! Yep. And then we kind of flash back to, uh, well, I guess kind of the present as Dick's leaving to go to Bloodhaven. Alfred, are you sure about this Bloodhaven? He's like, yeah. He's like, you got more than enough help, you know. Practically tripping over each other at this point. Yeah, mm. Time to go out from out from under Bruce's shadow. Speaking of which, and Alfred, I'm sure he wishes he could be here. And Dick's like, yeah, someone has to watch over the city, right? Yeah. He busts up Killer Moth and takes his cocoon gun, which is kind of sweet. And again, how far is like Bloodhaven? It's like he's taking the bus. I mean, even if Bruce couldn't be there, couldn't he at least, I don't know, give either a plane ticket or a nice rental car or something? Yeah, or like take your own motorcycle or whatever. But, you know, they always do that kind of stuff. Like very not practical things to show, you know, like, oh, I'm coming into Gotham on the train and, and stuff like that. I don't know. I guess to... uh to get that kind of old timey, old timey feel. Plus, it kind of keeps it nebulous as to you know, like what yeah. time period this is. Because and, and two, it's more like Dick's more of like of the people than Bruce, I guess. Yep. But yeah, he gets on the bus, and the next thing we see, he's in Bloodhaven. And he's caught Killer Moth. <laughs> yep. But maybe he's taking the bus because he had to save all his money for his swanky new headquarters, as he said. Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, look at that. It's like built into like a the mountain or something. I know. It's pretty sweet. Also, not that inconspicuous. There must be a lot of good security on that, but whatever. I was going to say, yeah, I'm assuming his, his apartment's somewhere else because, yeah, that thing's like, yeah, just like coming out of the mountain. Right. 
trophy. Mm. And then, of course, the flashback, he says the same thing when he was robbing him. First went down and saw it. He said, holy. And now he comes in, holy. This will get you started. No, oh, that's where Bruce was putting the dinosaur in. Oh. I know, it's so beautiful. But then he also- and that is a good story. Because, yeah, having a robot dinosaur really feels like something a Robin would say. Can we keep it? Because, yeah. But then I mean, also- I won't lie. If I fought a robot dinosaur, I would totally want to keep it if I had a giant cage where I could keep it. But, you know, Bruce Wayne's supposed to be much more serious than me. But again, too, if nothing else, you could say you're keeping it out of the wrong hands by hiding it in the cave. This is true. Or anyone's That's cave. what Bruce would say. He wouldn't admit it was fun. What's fun? So, yeah, good. That's my favorite one. That's my favorite one for the dinosaur. It's so cute. Yeah. I really, yeah. I mean, they're all good, but I really enjoyed, yeah, the new issue and then this one, the Batman Adventures. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, it was just, it was fun. Oh, but I'll mention real quick. shush, you love it. (laughs) I'll mention real quick since we covered that issue. Yeah, um, I think they just announced it today. Yeah, there's new Batman animated series coming from Bruce Timm, J.J. Abrams, and Matt Reeves. So. They haven't said much about it, though, like. Yeah, they just, like, announced it. I mean, the rumors were around, but, uh, yeah, they kind of, uh. Yeah, just announced. I guess I mean they haven't said like whether you know he'll have Robins or any of yeah, that kind of stuff. It just says, yeah, it's going to be Batman Caped Crusader, a new animated series that is set to debut on both HBO Max and Cartoon Network. Okay, so yeah, I can see if it's supposed to be on Cartoon Network. I mean, because although we're like, oh yeah, Batman the animated series. I mean, they did have the Batman um, for for a while. In the early 2000s, I think, around the same time that they had Teen Titans. So, I mean, I, the one thing I thought that was kind of, that was cool about Batman the Animated Series was, of course, they didn't, they mixed in, they, they, there wasn't like a specific timeline. They just kind of mixed in Robin episodes with not Robin episodes. Yeah. Um, whereas with the Batman, I think it's the first two seasons, it's just the Batman and then the third season, he gets Batgirl. And then Teen Titans ended. So in seasons four and five, he has Robin. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see. And I can I can see if it's on Cartoon Network, they might go a little simpler. I could see them starting it with just like just Batman and then maybe getting. Um, well, I just wonder, too, because next year we're getting, the, you know, the Batman movie with. um Robert Pattinson. Yeah, so there's, I don't think there's going to be any Robins or anything. So I just want, yeah, I wonder if it's going to be closer to that, maybe. Yeah, I could see it as them running it as just a Batman series for because, a season or two and seeing how it and seeing how it does. Because Matt Reeves is involved in that live action movie, so yeah, I could see that. Oh, is he? Okay. But it does give me hope that it's going to be on Cartoon Network. As well, because then it should be, you know, like a little bit fun and not. It should be like for all ages, I guess. And I like that. Uh, what's this? Uh, the, the series will be thrilling, cinematic and evocative of Batman's noir roots while diving deeper into the psychology of these iconic characters. We cannot wait, wait to share this new world. So, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, if it's going to be on HBO Max, you know, probably, you know, you can play the episodes whenever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like I was saying, since it's going to be on Cartoon Network, that gives me hope that maybe it will be... Um, yeah, kind of for all ages. Because it yeah. was HBO... Because, like, I don't... I feel like the Harley Quinn animated series was not all ages, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, oh, no, no, no. Yes, Harley Quinn, yes. No, that that is mature audiences. I mean. Right. So I feel like if it's if it was just HBO Max, I could see it being kind of also mature and pretty dark. But I feel like I would, I would guess, hopefully, if it's going to be on Cartoon Network, they would try to have it tonally be more like the Batman or Batman the Animated Series, where yeah. it sounds like it's going to be a little darker than Batman Brave and the Bold. Oh, yeah. Um, but that it wouldn't be like 
mature. I'm thinking mm-hmm. they brought in Bruce Tim, hopefully, just because they wanted to make it more like the original Batman the Animated Series. So right. fingers crossed. But yeah, oh yeah, that Harley Quinn. I think that's fine, just so long as he doesn't have Bruce creeping on Barbara. <laughs> exactly. Well, again, maybe it'll be Catwoman because you know she's in that Batman movie, so that's fine. Catwoman's his own age. Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> All right. So anything else? Nope. That's good. Well, what's up for next week, Phil? Well, I'm pulling up the schedule. Yes. Cause yeah, we got to a lot tonight Four four issues, the announcement of a new Batman animated series. Uh, All right. Ba-ba-ba. All right. So, Oh, next week. That's right. Uh, since we switched the order around next week, we'll be back. Uh, Nightwing, the new order miniseries. All right. And yes, I did reach out to Cal. He, he's, I knew he'd probably be busy. Yeah, he said he couldn't join us. So. All right, fair enough. I told him, I said, if he wanted to email me any thoughts, you know, I could read them or he can even send me an, you know, pre recorded audio. So, um, sounds good. So yeah, that's in one week. And then in two weeks, uh, our, our, our uh, episode of the Eclipso crossover. And all, through all our DC shows. So we will be covering new Titans annual eight and death stroke annual one. All right, let's do it. All right. So yes. Uh, let me see. I actually wrote this down. So yes, we Nightwing news will be part three of the Eclipso crossover. All righty. All right. All right, kitties. So, Lots of good stuff coming. Send your thoughts. Uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember to follow Nightwing News on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, find links to all of the various social medias for all of our shows. Uh, links to this YouTube channel. Uh, links to our Patreon. More stuff coming there. Links to merchandise. Everything all in one place. That's Linktree, L I N K tr.ee slash capes and lunatics and please remember to support our sponsors tweaked audio and hunt a killer use the code southgate for both of those for a handy discount and no library is complete without one pod life the book now in digital and paperback audio version coming soon and fans of this show required reading pick up night way uh dick grayson boy wonder I was going to say Nightwing News, but yeah, there's a book we need to write. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder. Yes, pick that up. Uh, just interviews with creators and super fans put together by genius. And go that far. <laughs> uh, you can pick up those books and everything else on Amazon. And when you do, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support this show, the network, and that man who counts every penny, Rob Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain. Oh, is he a penny? Pl- is he a penny plunderer? <laughs> yeah. Why did your eye drift over to my box? All right. Uh... Thank you for joining us, kids. That's right. In one week, Nightwing the New Order, and then. Two we in two weeks, part three of the Eclipse of Crossover. That's right. It's not everybody do it. Do the Eclipse of it. A little of everything. It's kind of like an all kind of like a possible future next week, and then two weeks we do the Titans thing. Oh, and then in three weeks, I uh, the, the pick you were you've been chomping for Batman two was at two thirty two. Thirty two. Dick's kidnapped by Rashad. That's right. But you people are still free, so join us next week. Same wing time. Same wing channel. The Nightwing News. <laughs> <laughs>